Patrick CC dropped the new video, bro. Bam Margera could be in big trouble. Now we know what happened in the last video. This is gonna be the, the flashbacks of Aura. Let's see what's going on, bro. Okay, mind is cleared. We're ready. Well, let's check it out, bro. Bam Margera is in trouble. For the past two years, Bam has been in and out of rehabilitation centers that he was seemingly forced into going. At first, everyone thought he was admitted for his own good. Not anymore. New information has been unveiled that Bam has been put in a legal guardianship. People who are in guardianships usually cannot choose where they live, cannot have access to their phone, and sometimes cannot consent to their own medical treatment. New kind of pain or enough to send shivers to my spine. Yo. You know, I feel you though. I feel you though. This is a, uh, yeah. His family and friends have been chasing him all around the oh, country as he escapes man. from different facilities. They have a sophisticated system to find him and get him back to treatment centers. But Bam's situation is not as simple as a reckless man being protected from himself. Bam is very likely the primary income source for many of the people around him. He recently mm. just got fired from Jackass Forever and missed out on a $5 million payday. And his legal guardian, Lima, while well, the last person that was in her care, died. Yo, this music is crazy, bro. This music is crazy. I just want to make a quick disclaimer and say that there is a great deal of speculation that I will be doing in this video, okay. meaning that what I'm saying is not fact. I found all of this information online. I'm hiding knows? under my bed with C4 planted on my doorway while holding an AK. Bro, this is not war zone, bro. Oh my god. Could bro. all be wrong. But I guess you can in GTA, so what he also, means in GTA. Also, my video from early 2022 about Bam is pretty much a great video. Essential to figure out how we got here. Also, you will. If y'all haven't seen it, go watch it. Be bro. very lost if you didn't watch my most hey, recent video about Lima and Amanda. There's a lot of important information in there. But I'm gonna do a one minute speed round of background information for the few that don't know who Bam is. Bam Margera and his friends in the 90s started a stuntman slash skateboard group called CKY. They made extremely popular videos filming these stunts and sold over a million copies. Jeff Tremaine and Johnny Knoxville made a popular magazine slash film series surrounding skateboarding and, and stunts Roblox called Big Brother. CKY and Big Brother came together and Jackass was made. Bam was the second most famous and successful Jackass star, multiple MTV shows, and millions of dollars. For his whole life, his dad has been his accountant and business manager. His mom has been cleaning up Bam's mess his whole life, but worth it for millions of dollars. Almost all the jackass guys struggle with addiction. Bam stayed clean until 2007 when he started getting addicted to alcohol and Adderall. However, he was prescribed Adderall for his ADHD. His best friend Ryan Dunn tragically passed away in 2011 and Bam spiraled out of control. R. For 12 years, he has been in the vicious cycle of doing drugs, public freakouts, trying to get clean, rehab, relapsing, and starting all over again. 2019 was a rough year for Bam. He had multiple public freakouts, a Dr. Phil episode, and a number of manic Instagram rants. Get it! That's why. Because you don't get it. So what's before that? A heartogram. Why? Because I love it. Heartograms are fire. Why do I love it? Because it's f***ing awesome. Lasky and Strigoi. And English. Burns the same. No, it's the opposite, you f wit. He admitted himself into Wave Lengths Rehab in Huntington yes, Beach, California in August of 2019. It was supposed to be 30 days, but they encouraged him to do 90, even though he was paying for it. During his stay, mm. Jeff Tremaine, Spike Jones, and Johnny Knoxville visited him and told him that he needed to sign a wellness agreement. If he didn't sign it, he would not be a part of the 2022 film Jackass Forever or any other Jackass endeavor in the future. Normally, he gets paid $5 million for a film, which likely is his primary source of income to provide for his wife, child, and family. This indicates that he was coerced at a vulnerable moment in his life into signing this document. He signed it. This wellness agreement included, but was not limited to, blowing into a breathalyzer three well, times. You're speaking facts for real? Yeah, nah, that's, that's what I'd be feeling about a lot of people that be, you know what I'm saying, going through stuff like that. Because one thing about addiction, bro, especially with certain drugs, people will be very open about what they're using. Which means if they're open about using something, what do they have to lie about? So, they could be spitting facts. I, I feel that way about Orlando Brown and Busy Bone for sure. Which I don't think Busy Bone has openly said he, he's a user, but you know, had Tyler Creator in it. Had what Tyler Creator in it? What had Tyler Creator in it? You talking about, man? 
per day, submitting to a urinalysis twice a week, having his hair follicles tested on a regular basis. Hair tested? No, I never heard of that. That's crazy. Taking medication every morning while on a FaceTime call with a doctor hired by Paramount. According to mm. Bam, he was prescribed 18 different medications by a doctor in this rehab. 18? 18 medications? No, that's crazy, bro. That's good. That's Michael Jackson numbers, bro. That's wild. For Adderall and alcohol, I come out on Zoloft, Visterol, Bipropion, Lithium, Concerta, Propanol, Seroquel, Contrave, Trazodone, Vivitrol, Nelson. Oh, Trazodone, okay, that's what you mean. Okay. I didn't know Tyler was in it, but I knew Jasper's in it. I knew Jasper was in it, but I didn't know Tyler was in it. That makes sense, though. That makes sense. But nah, 18 is crazy. Zepraxa. I need to watch it. It's on Netflix. I haven't watched it yet. I don't know why. Lexapro, Abilify, Wellbutrin, Fralar, and Adderall, because I have ADD, and Klonopin. Two of those medications were Adderall and Klonopin, in which Johnny Knoxville allegedly told Bam he couldn't take, even though mm. Bam had been prescribed Adderall for the past 13 years. So he was being told by a doctor one thing and by the Jackass team another thing. This magnitude Yikes. of different medications led to extreme mood swings, depression, anxiety, and ending thoughts. He described this as psychological torture. Despite the unclear rules, Bam obliged and stayed clean for over a year. During that time, he worked on Jackass Forever, filmed many of the scenes, and even submitted ideas for the film in which many were used. However, one day he was on a road trip with some buddies and slipped up. He took an Adderall. Immediately feeling guilty, he checked himself into a Florida rehab, but that wasn't good enough for the Jackass team, and they fired him from the film. Jackass was everything to me. Terrible, bro. I, like I get it, obviously, it 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 was a uh, you know he broke the contract, but like come on now man, come on bro, it I I think it is a little a little tough and unfair that you know he got completely cut from the movie. If anything, no more new scenes or something like that, but completely just cut, bro. I think that's messed up, man. They could have gave bro a mill and been like, all right, bro, you're done. You know, that's that's what I think. But who knows, man. Dad. Terrible. No, I'm so relieved to get Yikes. Fuck you, Spike. Yikes. Not for real, bro. You Pray for Ben. You never man. cared about me, man. You just don't know what's going on. It's Tremaine and Knoxville. They're poison suckers. And they just are. <laughs> Yes. Initially looking at the situation, it seemed pretty clear. Bam signed an agreement and broke it. Simple. Yeah. Or as Steve-O put it, Bam, the two people you're saying wronged you are the same two people who organized the intervention which saved my life. Everyone mm. bent over backwards to get you in the movie. I didn't watch the Steve-O video that Patrick did, but I know a lot about Steve-O. So I, that's why I didn't watch it. So I, I know what he's talking about. And from that perspective, it does make sense and all you had to do was not get loaded. You've continued to get loaded. It's that simple. But if a doctor prescribes medication for an ADHD disorder that is well documented exactly. and he takes the medicine, it doesn't matter what Johnny Knoxville says. He's not legally in violation of his wellness agreement. And taking exactly. That, like, that's the weird part. Like, it's not even like it's a loophole that he went through to try and get that prescribed so he could still take Adderall. Like, it just, you know? Taking Tough, different medications bro. daily in order to be in a film will take a mental and physical toll on someone. For yes, he has a history of alcohol abuse. Yes, he was addicted to a medication he was prescribed. Yes, he has a history of being a spoiled brat who gets everything he wants and cries when things don't go his way. And again, watch my previous video so you can hear the backstory. But he was unlawfully fired from this film. So he filed yeah. a lawsuit against MTV, Paramount, Jeff Tremaine, Johnny Knoxville, and many others for inhumane, abusive, and discriminatory treatment in August of 2020. He actually won this lawsuit. Well, technically, oh, wow. they settled outside of court for an undisclosed amount in April of 2022. But they okay. settled because they knew they discriminated against his illness and fired him for taking a medication that he was prescribed. However, it was That's this kind of a W, I guess. This clip that made people realize there was something else going on. But before we dive any deeper, a quick word from our sponsor. Morning Brew is a free ad. daily news. Morning Brew. W ad. Morning Brew. Plus more Morning Brew. He's and under a conservatorship. Com slash Patrick CC. Love so to see yeah, about. he's in a program. Um, and the good thing is now is is uh he's got like he's under a conservatorship, you know. And it's not a conservatorship; it's a guardianship. Oh really? And the conservatorship has Spears. has financial implications. With the conservatorship. They're they're in charge of all of your your money and everything. A guardianship, they they kind of leave your money out of it. Yeah. And uh, and the guardianship, they're just like kind of 
there's rules you have to abide by. And so Bam is allegedly in a conservatorship or a guardianship. You may have heard these terms associated with the Free Britney movement, where she was basically controlled by her father for 12 years. He controlled her money, forced her to take medicine, restricted her phone access, and she had no way of escaping. A conservatorship is where a judge appoints an individual or organization to care for another adult who is deemed unfit to care for themselves or manage their own finances. Knowing Bam's history, you could make an argument that- Nah, bro, if it was the aura ad, the mu- Bro, would've lost it, bro. I ain't gonna lie. It's justified. Maybe he is unsafe to himself and others. Maybe he shouldn't have access to the internet. Maybe he is incapable of getting his life on track by himself. He was talking on the podcast thing. Uh, I only saw- I only recognized Steve-O. I don't know anybody else from there. However, these legal bindings usually give the conservator or guardian an unfathomable amount of power. They literally control your whole life, phone access, bank accounts, medicine intake, where you can and can't travel. The legal system kind of looks at a conservatee like a toddler and the conservator as the parent. The conservator yes. basically takes all your constitutional rights. On top of that, it's interesting when Bam is the one bringing all of the money in for his wife, his parents, mm. and maybe even his brother and friends and family. So they depend on him financially and this could be a way where they get a little more control. And just a disclaimer, this is not fact. This is all speculation. Facts. I'm just a YouTuber who knows nothing about anything. Don't go threatening anybody. <laughs> I was Don't. about to say, <laughs> I was about to say, brush trying to, you know what I'm saying, pre-damage control just to make sure nothing goes wrong. Go I spamming feel. free Bam on social media. But who is yeah, Bam's nah. conservator? Who is this? But like, free Bam though, just, just in case. Cause like, you know, you know, imagine if we knew about Britney's situation way earlier. You know what I mean? Things probably would have went a little bit different. So, you know, like I said, don't go spamming it, but like, you know. Person controlling all his decisions. And what are they doing with this power? His mom? His wife? Brother? Nope. Lima Yevremovich, founder of Aura, which is a digital mental health services company. They apparently have proprietary- Yo, the editing, the, the score of this video, amazing. Honestly, hats off, bro. Cutting edge technology- Cause I am immersed and I'm terrified right now. Self-delete, harm to oneself or others. They basically approach mental therapy like physical therapy, trying to use data and vital information about the body and brain to diagnose mental issues. Because just asking someone how they feel and giving them medicine seems like an outdated form of treatment. Lima got popularity on the internet by partnering with Soft White Underbelly, which is a YouTube channel owned by Mark Laeda. Mark interviews addicts, criminals, prostitutes, victims, people with rare conditions, basically anyone outside of the appropriate or expected normal course in life, whether it was by choice. Steve-O. Yeah, no, that was Steve-O. That was Steve-O. I didn't recognize anybody else, though. But yeah, Steve, it, I feel like one thing about Steve-O, like his voice definitely does sound crazy now, but it's way better than it was at one point and definitely could be. You know what I'm saying? All them whippets, bro. It, it's a, like, like, like he said, bro, it's a good thing that, you know, Knoxville and Tremaine did that intervention to get him up out of there because, you know, but like that one scene from Get Out where he's crying when he's in the sunken place. Nah, for real. Steve-O changed a lot, but for the better, honestly. Steve-O changed a lot for the better, bro. Shout out to Steve-O. High key. I, like I said, I would have watched that video, but I just knew a lot about him already, so. By force or by chance. These interviews are intended to humanize these people. Soft White Underbelly not only interviews these people, but they try to positively impact their lives. Constantly checking out- I even like, what's his name, bro? Can't think his name, bro. Jason Statham. On them, buying them food, giving them resources, not just profit. Sound effects are taking It seems like Mark partnered with Lima to have a professional mental health services company in his corner to provide even more value to his interview subjects if they choose to get help. Lima and Mark decided to raise money and use someone who they interviewed to get services and essentially prove that Aura's method and technology works. That person was Amanda, who was a victim of drug addiction and prostitution. RIP. Lima and her company Aura got Amanda off the streets and eight and a half months sober. Then she died in her sleep. I made an entire video Imagine about Amanda. it was a vine boom, yo. And Lima's story. It's suspicious for sure. But uh, after Amanda died, Patrick. Lima immediately focused on- Patrick, you, you didn't finish the video, bro. Uh, uh, uh sir? And then Lima's story. Anyways. It's suspicious for sure. But after Amanda <laughs> Anyways, died, bro. Lima immediately focused on getting Bam under her control. We'll, we'll pretend like we didn't see it. We'll pretend like we didn't see it. In April of 2021, Lima posted this on Instagram. Just wrapped up a very successful Las Vegas trip with Lima Aura's from partner in Aura. treatment centers. Thank you for all the support with Amanda to Bam Margera and Nikki B for backing us. So while Bam was sober, if you count being on 18 prescribed medication sober. Seriously, bro. That's something I didn't even think about. That's not sober, bro. 
18 medications is very far from sober. There's people that are actually addicts that don't even use that many different medications, bro. That's crazy. That, not nah, for real. Best thumbnail I've seen in a minute. At Lima, we don't know how or why he quote. I, I got, I gotta check her Instagram real quick, bro. See, see what she's saying, man. What do we have going on? Lima from Aura. Uh. Okay. So hold on. Hold on, she actually addressed it. She actually addressed this a month ago. Okay, it was actually, it was Steve-O's podcast, Steve-O's Wild Ride. She posted some clips or whatever of Steve-O and Bam talking uh, and basically said that he was in a, Bam was in a one-year temporary guardianship for reasons undisclosed to the public. It's not my place to discuss this. Bam can address it when he's ready if he chooses to. He was never in a conservatorship. I served him as his temporary guardian for one year to help him get back on track. I've never been paid for my time. I'm a family friend who wants nothing more than to see what imaginative, amazing things Bam creates in this next chapter of his life. My role in this was to simply help with intervention and be a supporter and advocate for him. The free Bam movement is based on speculations, conspiracies, and imagined facts. It's grown to become a danger to her and her family. All right, man. All right, well you know interesting but uh yeah uh I'll take a few pills takes at not for 18 is crazy her company which insinuates that he invested some money or does he just support them we're not really sure the only clue we have is this photo, which was posted on Bam's wife's Instagram in January of 2021. The man right here is Albert Monero Jr. We okay. know this because Nikki posted another photo with him, tagged him. Well, become the Alchemex of Adams. Was Alchemex? That sounds familiar. I don't know what that is though. The hashtag family. Are they related? Not sure. Albert Monero Jr.'s LinkedIn states okay, that he- Is that like Big Pharma? Is that like a Big Pharma thing? Probably. Wouldn't be surprised, man. Is the program director at Aura. It's likely that Albert is the one who introduced Bam to Lima, but I guess we can't mm. be sure. Anyways, okay. a few weeks after Lima posts about Bam backing Aura, Amanda dies. It was a sad day for the soft white underbelly community as she was eight and a half months sober and passed away in her sleep. Bam spent a lot of 2021 publicly attacking the jackass guys after being fired. This culminated to yeah. Jeff Tremaine filing a restraining order against Bam because wow. he was threatening Jeff's life. Bam oh. rants to Tremaine in an incoherent series of texts about signing a contract. We don't know what the contract says because it is written in Bam's made-up language, Strigoi. The judge granted Tremaine this restraining order in June of 2021. Huh. From here, a petition for a court-ordered evaluation against Bam was ordered and granted on the same exact day. Marvel and fictional company that turned out to be evil. Okay. Okay, that's probably one I just missed. But yikes, my bad. But, uh, yikes, man. Maricopa County, Arizona on June 1st, 2021. This probably is like Purdue Pharma of Marvel basically when you want someone to be evaluated and apply with a mental health facility but then you need a judge to sign off on it so the subject is legally required to comply we're not sure why it was applied for in arizona specifically or who applied for it all we know is that these people are involved in the application and none of them are his family but lima's name is on the document three days later judge christian bell granted a detention order christian bell was detained, medicated, and ordered by a court treatment at a mental health facility. Basically, is crazy. he was forced into treatment. Now, whenever Bam is in treatment, it's a dead giveaway on his Instagram. Someone else mm. makes posts and turns off the comments. It's always old photos, videos, and memories that his audience eats up. Very similar to what was happening with Britney Spears. Sometimes mm. they even sell merchandise while he's in rehab. In early August, he was transferred from crazy. Arizona to an outpatient program in Florida. So he spends most of his time in a rehab, but he was able to leave the facility facility at night or maybe on weekends why was he transferred well we don't know the first thing he did when he got out on august 9th was sue jackass paramount jeff tremaine and everyone else he was still very angry at them one month later on september 14th lima yavremovich filed an application to become bam's legal guardian on that same day 
Bam's wife filed for custody of their child. Some people look at this as a setup. Mm. That does not seem like a coincidence. Lima's tactic yeah, that's of getting weird. people into conservatorships or guardianships is posted on her R website. Step one is getting them into jail. And what do you know? Two weeks later, on September 26th, Bam was arrested and the story couldn't be any more suspicious. Yo, I know it's speculation. I know she cleared it up on her Instagram, but hey, man, I'm not good at math, but this is adding up, bro. It is. He, it uh, is. Uh, has a woman that's kind of his minder. He arrived from Orlando to back to the hotel about three, three or four o'clock this morning. Started attacking her. Um, I she just let me know, and um, they're doing cocaine in the room. Um, he's got like a, a prostitute or some woman like that in the room as well. He attacked her, grabbed her breast, and she said she thinks he um, tore her, her implant. And uh, she came down and, and then went back up. And so they're up in the room right now. I just arrived at the hotel this minute. So he attacked um, her at the dancers are? Right, in the room. Around 3 to 4. Okay. At around 3 to 4. No, uh, this is just now. Just okay. now. And does she need a paramedic? She said she told um, me. I don't know. Stage name is Bam, B A M, from that show Jackasses. Mm -hmm. okay. Yo, Jackass. bro. I don't know how tall he looks. So he's 5'11. Oh, wait, no, he's not that tall. He's 5. Um, it's like five seven. Five seven. Five eleven to five seven is kind of crazy. I ain't gonna lie. Heavy build. Uh, medium. Does he seem to be under the influence of drugs, or alcohol right now? Absolutely. There's no question about okay, it. Okay, because you said yeah. they're doing uh, cocaine. Is that correct? Cocaine and really highly intoxicated okay. as well. He's um he's in uh, severe psychosis. I believe he's been diagnosed Yo. as uh, paranoid schizophrenic. He's been okay. diagnosed as bipolar. He's got a long history of mental illness. He's escaped from three treatment centers in the last three, in the last two months, actually. So, so according to this unnamed call, that's crazy. Man was in a hotel room high on Coca Cola with a prostitute. <laughs> Coca Cola. With a... Yo, I'm done. Tore her breast implant, but this caller. You know, that's crazy. That's crazy. That's something I always wonder about too. Like, how is that not more common? It's like people, you know. Hey, man. These doctors are getting good, though. I didn't know if the woman needed medical attention. He said that it happened at 3 a.m., but the woman went back upstairs with him. He also didn't know how tall Bam was, but knew that he was diagnosed as a paranoid schizophrenic. Exactly. Like, that's kind of weird. Bipolar and knew that he escaped three treatment centers in the last two months. How did he know this information? Well, he said that Bam has a minder who gave him this information. A minder is someone whose job it is to look after someone else. Turns out this unnamed caller is a man man named Steven Timmer, who's an interventionist that was hired by a quote, trustee to get BAM to treatment. Steven said the woman- Come on now, dog. Oh, really going for this, bro. Uh, you're assuming Coca-Cola. Well, you're wrong because they put cocaine in Coca-Cola way back then. They weren't calling. I don't think they were shortening it to Coke back then, but they might have been. But, uh, you know. It's Coca-Cola, though. I mean, Coke. Like, actual Coke came first. Because the plant that it comes from, the coca leaf, has been around for hundreds of years. It used to be used, it was a form of medicine for a long time before it became, you know, known as the Coke that we know. But it has been around for centuries, so. And Coca-Cola's only been around for, like, two centuries. Which is still crazy, but probably not even two centuries yet. About to be, matter of fact, no, nah, I think it is 200 years. I think it's been around for that long now at this point. Or it's about to be, I don't even know, bro. The woman in the room's name was Missy, who is his 65-year-old aunt. This is the woman being referred to as his minder. And when the police got upstairs, expecting an assault and cocaine everywhere, they just got a very normal Bam and his aunt. The police go in the room to talk to Bam, and another officer goes to talk to his aunt Missy. Missy is on the phone with someone. Oh, thank you, Okay, so, so, what's going on? You can hang up. This is his daddy. We can assume it's Lima, and we can even hear her voice for a second, and it sounds like her. We can yeah. also assume that she's instructing Missy on what to do and what to say. The police officer asks Missy who she is to Bam, and she goes on this long rant, not answering the question, not saying anything about a prostitute or an assault, and just says that Bam is out of his mind. Plus, she also said... He just yeah. got here. So the guy who made the call said that Bam just attacked a woman here. at 3 a.m. on cocaine and she was a prostitute. And this woman says, no, he just got here. What? 
Missy is embarrassed, nervous, and probably feeling weird. shame because she is setting up her nephew to be locked in yet another rehab. Bam was detained. Did he commit a crime? We don't know. All we have is this little clip where he says, from who, Lima? And the cop says, I don't know. I just have a judge's order. From who, Lima? Just have a judge's order, all from right? Lima? I don't know. So the cop has an order from the judge to this take Bam to weird, a rehab bro. over seemingly a false story. It seems like Lima, Missy, and Steven made up a lie about Bam doing drugs and assaulting a prostitute to get the police called to the hotel. Once they were called, Lima was able to secure her conservatorship and get Bam under her control. Whether the story was real or not, Lima was now officially Bam's guardian. This reminds us of when Amanda got arrested yep. over allegedly beating her father with a pipe to be taken to jail and then into Lima's care. Bam, a few months later, told the story. He knows he was set up and sabotaged. I was gonna see my wife and kid who I haven't seen in a half of a year to hug the shit out of him. Then a minute goes by and the police are knocking on the door. They handcuff me and take me back to a rehab. But he doesn't realize it was his own family who did it to him. That was in September Terrible, of 2021. Bro. We basically heard nothing about Bam for the next eight months. It was also during this time that I made my video. We got a few random posts on his social media that someone else is controlling, claiming that he is working on his health. Most of his core fan base thought this was really good for him. It was also during this eight month period that BJ Investigates started exposing this information and doing her due diligence. She's also the one who got WBJ access to I was about to say she was the last video too. Yo, W bro, W. That's just strange. All of these court documents that we now have been checking. The free BAM movement started attracting a larger audience. It it's is also crazy. because of this public information that BJ was exposing that she is now facing lawsuits from various people involved in this situation. Then on May 3rd. Yo! No, that's crazy. See, that's crazy. That's when it gets a little bit weird when you're starting to throw out lawsuits. Like, sure, defamation, maybe. But like, to go that far about a YouTube video is a little weird. A little incriminating, if you ask me, bro. That's what I think. A little incriminating. 13th, 2022, a photo was posted to Bam's Instagram that said Bam's free. He had accomplished one year of sobriety. This is Lima's benchmark for success. He was back on Cameo, back skateboarding, posting on Instagram by himself. Are skates again? He w? had a skate accident, but it seemed like Yikes. the most normal version of Bam. Hey, yo! Hey, yo! Oh! Oh, no, no word. There's a no, no word on his tattoo right there. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. Yikes, man. Yikes, man. Uh, all right. Well, he even did a podcast with Steve-O, but that wasn't released until August. We can speculate on that in a minute. Everything was nah. all good, but on June 12th, a throwback photo, then another, then no. another, and another. No. Even fellow Jackass member Chris Pontius started noticing. Didn't see anything good. Yeah, I don't even know, bro. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe my eyes deceived me, and I didn't see what I thought I saw. I'm not taking any risks, anyways. He's posting his bam. He this is crazy. Just free. After one year, blind in your right eye for yeah, man. Gone again. Terrible yes. man. He was sent back to a rehab in Florida. Crazy. This was confirmed to the public on June 13th, when Bam fled his court-ordered treatment center unauthorized. He was reportedly mm. unhappy with the care he was receiving and decided to take matters into his own hands. He was found in a Florida hotel two days after fleeing and admitted himself back into another rehab. Not Yikes. even two weeks later, on June 25th, Bam would escape another treatment facility. Yikes. This time, however, a video surfaced of him hanging with a weird group of friends seemingly very inebriated they even film and uh, laugh at him while he's passed out on a hotel room bed a year's worth of sobriety ruined two days later he was found in a different florida hotel where police a crisis intervention team and both of his parents took him to yet another facility on top of this craziness his wife was not allowing him to see his son allegedly she was yikes. not communicating with him directly only through their custody team i don't think anyone would really blame her considering these hectic times yeah so then, yeah it, it's definitely understandable now still still a little shady but i get it though i get it is running around like a madman most people look at this as a man refusing to get clean which very well could be true maybe he's sick of being forced into rehabs for the past two years of his life maybe he is actually manic and a danger to himself but the free bam movement got so big since he was constantly disappearing from the public eye his fans were so concerned with bam safety that they had to address it on social media whoever's controlling mm. bam's account admitted that bam had been in a temporary health care guardianship with mm. Lima, not conservatorship some people say it's the same exact thing but she is no longer his guardian it's because it's the same thing that lima posts this is what i read earlier 
This is the, basically the same exact words, bro. And today, they assure us that Bam is getting the care he needs, and being out of the public eye is the best thing for Bam right now. They say if he chooses to speak on it, he will. But they don't give him access to his phone, and whenever he says something mm. that they don't like, they delete it or not approve it to get posted. So basically, if he chooses to speak on it and says what they want him to say, is when he'll speak on it. Yikes. I guess the Instagram post wasn't enough, so they released the podcast with Steve-O. This was uploaded in August, but it was filmed in May, before he escaped all these rehabs. I would love to set the record straight that number one, Bam has not ever been under a conservatorship, that the temporary guardianship he was under did not ever have any financial implications. And what's come to be known as the free BAM movement has really been very toxic. It serves to try to assassinate the character of BAM's former guardian, Lima, who has never been paid to work on BAM's case, has never done anything but try to help BAM. What you will notice in this podcast is Steve-O is trying to control the conversation in a very specific way mm. so he can stop the conspiracy theorists yeah, from yeah, continuing yeah. their narrative. The hashtag. It's normal to me because I've seen so many clips from this podcast and so many other interviews and stuff with him recently. Like, it's just normal. It's how Steve-O sounds. Free BAM. And people seem to think that you're the Britney Spears of Jackass, the evil villains have taken over over your life and stolen all your money and like can we safely say that none of that is true i i don't know what's been going on because i haven't been able to look I, as a matter of fact i can't even post on my instagram everything has to go for johnny schiller from heart supply so bam does not have control over Yikes. his instagram steve didn't like the way bam responded to this question so he asked it again can we safely say that you have not been a prisoner and mistreated and like you know like stolen from like like the the, the whole like help us understand your situation no i i've i was just getting treatment for my alcohol and bipolar and um and i i just did more time than i was supposed to just from getting kicked out for dumb reasons but um now i'm i'm out i get freedom i get a phone and uh Nobody was forcing me to be there. Also something interesting I want to point mm. out is that the reason why Bam was in these rehabs for one year is really strange. I did Madero Beach on the on the west side and I made it 75 days. I had 15 days left. And they're like, Bam, you've been rocking the same sweatpants for 75 days. I'm like, yeah, I'm not trying to get any fucking pussy around here. I don't give a <laughs> shit. Yo. And they're like, well, you're getting kicked out for bad hygiene. I'm like, oh my God. So I get to another place in Ocala National Forest. So I'm like, so this is day 76. They're like, oh no, you're starting at square one. I'm like, what? So I Bruh. make it to day 80 there and I smoke a cigarette and I throw it out and it's smoking in a bush and they film it. They're like, you could have lit the whole national forest on fire. You're getting sent to West Palm Beach. I'm like, what? No, I know I'm getting back to square one. That's why I've been doing this for a year. Now, I don't really know much about rehabs, but it seems kind of ridiculous that they would make you restart your entire rehab program just because you didn't change your sweatpants. Not and for also, real. smoking a cigarette, then flicking it into a bush, and apparently trying to set the place on fire is another reason why you need to restart your entire rehab process yeah. for 90 days? Maybe Seems kind of like a crazy reach, bro. You can confirm that in the comments, but that doesn't seem like a valid reason. This is weird. It seems like like something else Weird. happened that Bam doesn't really know about. Maybe it was Lima keeping him in the rehab. Steve mm. ends a podcast with a powerful message. Please be supportive of Bam being in rehab, of taking sobriety seriously, because anybody who's talking about free Bam, let him out, get him out of treatment. Like you're trying to kill my fucking brother, you know, and don't do that. There are a lot of people that will look at this situation like Steve-O and say Bam isn't getting sober because of his own actions. Nobody is to blame but Bam, and his family just wants to help. And that is 100% true. Nobody will be able to get sober without their own determination. Facts. However, there I think are I said so this in the last many one. factors here that just make this suspicious. After Ryan Dunn passed in 2011, Bam was in terrible shape for years until 2016, 
Nobody ever forced him in and out of rehabs. No guardianships, just partying with him and enabling his lifestyle. When he was in pain, his most successful attempt at getting sober was in 2016 and 2017 when he decided to move to Estonia, then Barcelona on his own volition. He lost a lot of weight, skateboarded every day, and stayed sober for a year. When he got back to the States, he had a kid. A year later, he's throwing parties at Castle Bam, seemingly back in this toxic lifestyle. But to me, he looks way more in control than his wife, who's diving the crowd full of men with her pants off. So it's all good when everyone else wants to party, but not when Bam does, even though he's in one pain. Good catch, my brother. But to me, he looks way good more catch, in my brother. his wife, who's diving it's the fine when they do it. with her pants off. So it's all good when everyone else wants to party, but not when Bam does, even though he's the one paying for everything. He wrote this long letter from rehab in 2019. In this letter, he said they would not let him take business calls. They would not let him manage his Cameo account that had $20,000 worth of deliverables. He said that being wow. in rehab is preventing him from progressing because he cannot create or work. On top of that, he was the one who was paying for the treatment. At this point in nah, early nah, 2019, he was not being medicated in rehab. It was during the wellness agreement that Paramount, Jeff Tremaine, and Johnny Knoxville made him sign in mid-2019 where he was put on 18 different medications that they forced him to take every single day. I don't think people realize how damaging it is to a person when they're on multiple <laughs> antidepressants, mood stabilizers, uppers and downers. That makes you crazy. But whenever yeah. Ben talks about it, the public just thinks, here we go again. And they don't believe anything he says. Plus the one drug he couldn't take was Adderall. The only drug he was actually prescribed for many years. And once he took one Adderall, he got booted from the film. Then when he got fired from Jackass, which he normally makes $5 million from, just his friends and family <laughs> probably yo, thought, holy shit, what? Bam's behavior just made us lose all of that money. The last Jackass film was in 2011, so Bam hasn't made a giant check like that in 11 years, and now won't ever get another Jackass payday. Bam didn't care about the Yikes. money because his dad has been- Because it did say it because the wellness thing that he wouldn't be in any of them after that either. Well, I mean, that's the last one anyways, but still. Managing his finances for the past Yikes, 20 years. Bro. He doesn't know how money works. His his family realized they needed to do something by force. So for the past year or so, they've been chasing him all over the world and setting him up to lock him up in rehabs because if he can't get back on the right track, his whole family goes broke. Again, all speculation, no facts, just a dumb YouTuber here. But what we can all agree on is Bam 100% needs to tighten up and get his act together because other people have more control over his life than he does and it could get scary. Facts bro, yo, W video man. W video, bro. You gotta clap it up for him, man. You gotta clap it up. Hey, man. Uh, I don't know, bro. This, this whole situation is very weird. Still very scared of Aura and Lima. You know, not sure what they got going on. But, uh, yeah. Uh, yikes, man. W video, though.